time now for some of your COVID-19 questions. And joining us tonight, Dr. Michael Curry, an ER doc in Delta, BC, just outside Vancouver, and Dr. Samir Gupta, a respirologist in Toronto. Welcome to both of you. Welcome, Ian. So here we are on the eve of a lot of places relaxing restrictions, and that is kind of the theme of, of some of our questions. Uh, so, Dr. Curry, let me begin with you. As provinces begin to open, do seniors and or those with underlying issues need to stay inside until there's a vaccine? It's all about balancing the risks, Ian. To keep the risks absolutely as low as possible, people who are more vulnerable to it may want to isolate themselves and may want to uh, try to limit contact as much as possible. But that's going to have a social cost and just in terms of doing your daily activities of living, like getting groceries, there is going to be a need for some degree of social interaction. So the older and the sicker you are, the more vulnerable you are, and probably the more precautions you want to take. But limited ventures outside to get groceries and when outside practicing good hygiene will keep the risk down to a low level. Now to a couple of questions about physical distancing and both within challenging environments. And Dr. Gupta, uh, how should social distancing work on transit as things start to open up? I think the key on transit really is having less people on every subway car or street car or, you know, or bus. And, uh, you know, once you limit the number of people, you can also just block off seats to ensure that you have that physical distancing. Uh, in some places, they have something called an ambassador, so somebody actually works for the authority who's actually looking at that and making sure people are distancing. Uh, you want people to wear masks. You want to ensure hand hygiene because there are a lot of high-touch surfaces. So ideally, you have uh, access to hand sanitizer at every entry point and exit point. Uh, the other piece is that, you know, as, this, as it ramps up and people go back to work, it's going to be really tough in the rush hours, morning and evening rush hour. So it would be very helpful if workplaces were able to rotate start times and end times so that we see an easing of those crunch times. Good advice. Uh, Dr. Curry, an another uh, difficult environment for social distancing. How should it be managed for kids when they go back to school? Well, that's definitely going to be a challenge. I think some of the key things that we want to do are try to keep class sizes as small as possible. So uh, like Dr. Gupta mentioned, we may want to stagger class time. Also trying to keep physical distance within the classroom as, as best as can be done. And the other issue is probably trying to minimize interaction. So younger children that tend to get educated in one room might be a little bit easier to return to the classroom than students in high school or post-secondary education where you have a whole new group of students with every class. All right, one last question with very little time, but I, I want to touch on one part of it. Dr. Gupta, what is the rough timeline for a vaccine to come out for mass production? So, so let's focus on the production part of it. Yeah, the production can take a long time, actually, particularly when we're talking about, in this case, billions of doses. So traditionally, we produce vaccines either in chicken eggs, for example, for the flu vaccine, uh, or in cells that we culture. And you've got to produce it, you've got to harvest it, purify it, that takes time. The good news is that among the almost 100 vaccines now being tested for novel coronavirus, some of them are so-called mRNA or messenger RNA vaccines, and they work differently. Instead of giving actually a protein, you're giving a piece of genetic material that goes into the human cells and stimulates our own cells to produce the protein that will then trigger the immune response. And the advantage of that approach is that you can actually mass produce those kinds of vaccines very quickly. So if one of those is effective, we're going to have less of an issue on the mass production side. All right. Uh, a lot of people cheering on, a lot of scientists uh, around the world, for sure. Thanks to both of you. And uh, as you know, if you're a regular viewer of the show, we ask your questions about COVID-19 every night. So send those to us. You can message us directly on Instagram at CBC The National, or you can send us an email at covid at cbc.ca.